Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Five Ways to Simplify Cloud Data Protection with Azure. Today's event is brought to you by Veeam and Microsoft. This event is produced by Actual Tech Media. Before I introduce you to today's expert presenters, we have just a little bit of housekeeping here we first need to cover. My name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media, and I'm excited to be your moderator for today's event. Before I introduce you to today's expert presenters, I want you to know that this should be an educational event. We want you to get all your questions answered, and we encourage you to use the GoToWebinar questions box to ask all of your questions related to cloud, data protection, disaster recovery, Microsoft, Azure, and Veeam data protection. We'll be doing our best throughout the event to answer those questions, and we'll do a dedicated Q&A session at the end of today's event. We also have a number of handouts, including today's slide presentation, available for download there in the Handouts tab of the GoToWebinar console. I encourage you to download those now because those won't be easily accessible after today's event. We'll also be announcing the winner of an Amazon $300 gift card that's being awarded to one lucky attendee on the live event. If you're watching this event on demand, I'm sorry, the drawing has already occurred. Full price terms and conditions can be found at events.actualtechmedia.com. Dot com. And with that, I'm excited to introduce today's presenters. They are Mr. Chris McDonald, Systems Engineer at Veeam, and Mr. Martin Evers, Enterprise Channel Manager for Western Canada at Microsoft. Chris and Martin, it's great to have you on today's event. We'll kick it off by handing it over to Chris. Take it away, Chris. Thank you so much, David. Uh, welcome, everyone. It is great to be here. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing the many ways Veeam enables cloud data management. Uh, from today, you'll, be able, you'll learn how to extend your on-premises data protection uh, for both virtual and physical workloads to the cloud with Veeam's tight integration with Microsoft Azure, Azure Stack, as well as Office 365. Now, for those that are new to Veeam, I would like to actually provide a very uh, high level or quick introduction. Our vision is to be the most trusted provider of backup solutions that deliver cloud data management. We give businesses the confidence that their data is always on, protected and secure, that it meets all compliance and regulatory requirements, and that, and that your data can be leveraged for positive business value and innovation. Now the Veeam uh, cloud data management platform provides uh, five different components. First is backup, backup and recovery. And this is a, it's a simple to use and reliable software defined uh, solution that enables application aware backups granular recovery capabilities, along with verified backup and recovery of all critical assets. You know, it's, you know, Veeam ensures that customers are always able to recover from whether it's system failures or system outages or even cyber attacks and ransomware. Next, cloud mobility. It's the ability to protect, restore, and migrate all workloads across any cloud or platform. Monitoring and analytics, you know, the, the best way to ensure uptime is to identify any issues before they have any operational impact. And Veeam not only provides this for your backup infrastructure, but also your virtual, physical, and cloud environments as well. Automation being able to leverage your data to really to unlock a, you know a, a greater business value you know having the ability to test and orchestrate uh, your for business continuity and disaster recovery ensuring that you can cover in any sort of uh, disaster recovery event as well as integrate um, you know mission or pardon me integrate uh, migration and devops DevOps capabilities, enabling data reuse to really, to really accelerate the, de uh, the, the development and deployment of applications across any platform. And last but certainly not least 
is governance and compliance. To ensure your application security, compliance, and privacy requirements are met before you implement or before the deployment without any operational impact whatsoever. So at Veeam, we deliver solutions that are incredibly simple. Our single platform brings together all, uh, all your data in one place so that you can put it to work for you. Next is flexibility. We, you know, re we really have, we help you back up and manage your data from anywhere in your IT ecosystem at any point in time. A, a software defined and hardware agnostic approach that Veeam provides gives you the choice to run your Veeam software however and wherever that you need. You know, Veeam is cloud ready without the cloud tax of other solutions. And of course, reliability. Uh, it, it simply just works. There is no delay in the implementation and you get an immediate return on investment. Data is 100% portable across any system, whether that is physical, virtual, or cloud. Recovery is almost instantaneous. No waiting for hours to restore, uh, restoring back on premises or into the cloud with just a, within a few minutes. Now the integration with Veeam has, uh, that, that Veeam part of me has with Microsoft is second to none. And today what we're gonna be doing is really sharing some insight into how Veeam and Microsoft can help really minimize storage complexity and cost by leveraging Veeam Cloud tier, easily migrating your workloads into Azure, whether that is workload the, the, for, this, for the purposes of workload migration, or maybe even setting up a test or a sandbox environment. Uh, the importance of backing up your Office 365 data, Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, SharePoint Online, and Microsoft Teams, all including the, uh, with the, the simple and easy steps for restoring that data. You know, Veeam's, Veeam's enhanced NAS backup and protection, as well as protecting native cloud workloads. All right. Anything that you want to add there, Martin? Hey Chris, yeah, uh, sure. Thanks. Hey, thanks for setting up this webinar, and you know, I'm happy to be uh, to be a part of it. Um, you know, I just wanted to say that that you know, Microsoft um, you know works with companies to to modernize their their data state, and you know, my role here at Microsoft as the enterprise channel manager is to help our customers navigate our partner solutions that augment the uh, the Microsoft platform, and you know, Veeam uh, Veeam is one of our top partners for that. You know, in fact, Veeam was uh, our ISV partner of the year in 20, 2018. And before this webinar, I, I talked to a couple of my customers who actually have implemented Veeam, and I asked them, you know, why? Why are you using Veeam? And you know, the, the same answer really came back. It was about you know, the simple setup, uh, the ease of use, and, and you know, cost takeouts like, like on-prem on tape uh, backup systems, for example. Um, so, so yeah, I think up to, uh, up to now, I, I'm on the same page as you are. So back to oh. you, Chris. All right, Th thanks a lot, Mary. Uh, awesome, awesome. All right. So, you know, IT departments are, they're increasingly, increasingly um, facing mandates to really reduce hardware and reduce storage costs, while at the same time being required to, you know, secure and maintain and store more and more data for even longer periods of time. You know, and there could also be regulatory or corporate governance that may require an organization to keep copies of data for seven years, 10 years, or quite honestly, infinitely. Veeam and Microsoft can help you eliminate tape and reduce not only hardware, but also storage costs by leveraging Microsoft Azure to maintain your long-term backups. Let's actually take a look at how Veeam can easily enable unlimited backup storage capacity. If you are familiar with uh, Veeam Scale Up Backup Repository, it is a feature that you, you, that you will know and love. Now, for those that are not familiar with Veeam Scale Out Backup Repository, 
it is a logical entity of storage where it, it groups several backup repositories together into one logical entity. Now, when you configure a scale backup report repository, you actually create a pool of storage devices and systems summarizing or amalgamating their capacity, all right? Now, what if you could make that capacity infinite and never have to worry about running out of free space again, right? Being scale out back, backup repository is, or it will allow you to automatically spill the oldest backups into objects or Microsoft Azure blob storage. And the scale out backup repository is made up of two different components. First is the performance tier, all right? And this is what is going to be on-premises or the on-premises component of your scale up backup repository. Here is where you're going to configure your backup and your backup copy jobs um, to, send their uh, to send their data to, all right? Next is the capacity tier. The capacity tier is your native object storage or Azure blob storage integration. It is a solution that is policy-based. It is completely transparent um, to customers or the end user, meaning that when you, when you need to perform a recovery, it does, Veeam is going to know where the data is and we will be able to efficiently restore your data either from the performance tier or the capacity tier. There's nothing special that you need to do in the event that your data has been copied and or moved off into capacity tier. Uh, you know, you, as I mentioned previously, you will get that unlimited capacity uh, for the, from, the, from Microsoft Azure for that long-term data retention. And there is no additional costs or there are no double charges for storing your data in the cloud. This is unlike other backup providers who impose a cloud tax, all right? With our scale-out backup repository, we also give you the, uh, the, uh, the possibility either to immediately copy as soon as your data, uh, or pardon me, as soon as your backups are complete, or we can tear the oldest backup off into object storage based on a policy that you define. Let's actually now take a look, a closer look, pardon me, as to what is actually going on when we're one copying, but two uh, tiering or moving uh, into object storage. As I just mentioned, there are two modes uh, when, when we're dealing with, with cloud tier. One is copy, the other is tiering or moving. Now for copy mode, the backup file will automatically so there's nothing that you need to do special, but it will automatically send uh, your backups into Azure Blob as soon as the backup is completed. What this does is that it really simplifies the implementation of your three, two, one rule. So you're going to have a copy of your data, both on premises within your performance tier, as well as within, uh, within Azure Blob in the capacity tier. Now, the cop what we actually are copying is both the metadata within the backup file as well as the data chunks, all right? Now, when we are referring to uh, the move and, or pardon me, the mover tier, the process is a little bit different in that what happens is that we copy the metadata across to object storage or Azure Blob, and then we move the backup or pardon me, the data chunks into the capacity tier. As a result, because we are moving them, we reduce the storage footprint that you're going to have back on premises in your performance tier. Now, the value of keeping the metadata on premises or in your performance tier, there's really two, there's, there's two values to that. First is that you're going to be able to minimize egress charges meaning that because Veeam knows where exactly where all the blocks are, because we know where the data is, whether we're looking to recover an individual file, a folder, um, a, a volume, we, we just have to extract those blocks uh, from those backups. Veeam does not have to download the entire backup file 
back to the performance tier or back on premises in order to initiate and complete the recovery. Because we are only pulling back the blocks that are required, the amount of time that it's going to take um, to perform your recovery is drastically reduced because we're only pulling back the blocks that you need, not the entire backup file. I also want to highlight, you know, um, what actually goes on in terms of when we actually do copy or move the data into object storage. From what we can see on the screen here, there's two backup files. Backup file one contains blocks A, B, and C. Backup file two contains blocks A, B, and D, and these blocks are contained within that within the same backup chain. When it comes time for the first backup file to be moved uh, off into object storage, what we do is we create a metadata index file, right? And we copy those blocks, so A, B, and C, and then we reduce that the, the storage footprint on premises. Now, when it, when it comes time to move the second backup file off into object storage, we can see that, hey, wait a minute, blocks A and B are already there. So rather than you take those resources and copy those, um, those blocks up, as well as you know, minimizing storage, we actually create another metadata file, make, uh, create pointers to blocks A and B, and then only copy up block D. So one, the amount of time that it's gonna take for us, or pardon me, for Veeam, to copy that, that backup file off into object stores storage part of me is reduced and because we are we because we are leveraging a uh, a deduplication deduplication methodology the amount of storage that you're going to consume within um within azure blob is going to be less as well all right with object storage or integration with capacity tier or scale up backup repository there is intelligence built into our recovery process. Now let's just say that we create another backup and this is on a Wednesday. And the backup file for Wednesday contains blocks A, B, and D. In the event that you need to recover Tuesday's backup, all right, we can see that there is an overlap of blocks A and B. So even if we are looking or we select the restore point for Tuesday, Veeam knows that, hey, I already have blocks A and B on premises, so I'm actually going to take blocks A and B from the performance tier and then only have to extract block D from the capacity tier. All right, so that was Veeam's uh, you know, ability to leverage object storage or Azure Blob to really give you, uh, you know, unlimited capacity uh, for your backups. Now what I want to do is talk about workload mobility, all right? And whether you're just beginning or you're very far along in the your journey to the cloud, you know that it can be that the cloud and Microsoft Azure is really a powerful extension from or pardon me for your for your data center and your application strategy. And Veeam's cloud data management approach provides portability as well as protection and restoration of workloads into Microsoft Azure. All right, so Veeam Workload Mobility gives you the ability to restore any workload, and that can be physical or virtual into Azure in literally a few simple clicks. Uh, you know, as a customer, you can migrate for many reasons, and whether that is, you know what, you want to leverage Azure infrastructure as a service to run your workloads. Maybe you even want to set up uh, uh, a, uh, a, a sandbox or a testing environment, an environment, pardon me, to mitigate the risks of setting up um, or doing the testing within on premises. And then last but not least, uh, Microsoft currently has a promotion I'm not really sure if you call it a promotion. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll defer to Martin on that one. But if you want to get uh, an extended support for Windows 2008 R2 and Microsoft SQL Server 2008, 
if you are running them in Microsoft Azure, you're going to get extended support for an additional three years without having to pay for that if you had it on premises. Uh, Martin, not to put you on the spot here, but does, it, does that sound accurate or a thumbs up on that yeah. one or? No, you got it, Chris. It, it's the uh, ESU, so extended security updates. And you're right, if you, uh, if you move them to Azure, uh, Microsoft offers those for free. Um, so yes, correct on that one. Perfect, perfect. And as the slide indicates, one just completely automated wizard based and it is what you'll see um, when we actually do the demo portion uh, just a few simple steps uh, let's actually take a look at it from a from a hierarchy from a maybe a higher level whereas you know you've performed your backups on premises uh, whether that is virtual uh, endpoint or physical servers and those backups are going to land within a local repository Next, what you want to do is you'll want to ensure that you have a um, either express route or a VPN connection into Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure. And if, for those that are not aware, Veeam does have a free VPN solution that you can leverage to connect into Azure. And then once you make that connection into Azure, the wizard will allow you to walk, or pardon me, will walk you through and customize your restore your your virtual machine restore for the virtual machine size, the storage account that you want to use, uh, the type of disk, whether it's managed or unmanaged, uh, you know things like the virtual machine name, the resource group, the VNet and the subnet you want to place the VM in. Do you want to dynamic, or pardon me, do you want to assign a public IP address? or even what the network security group will be for that virtual machine. All right, Microsoft are protecting uh, Office 365, specifically through Veeam Backup for Office 365. And Microsoft does provide uh, an array of very powerful, powerful services within Office 365, but a comprehensive backup of your Office 365 data is, is not one of them. And what you may be asking is, you know what, Chris, why do I need a backup? Doesn't Microsoft take care of everything? And that is what the common perception is, is that Microsoft takes care of both the infrastructure as well as the data, all right? But in reality, Microsoft takes care of the infrastructure. They want to ensure that the Office 365 service is available, but the data, whether that be Exchange Online, OneDrive for Business, or even SharePoint Online, as well as Teams, that is your or the customer's responsibility. All right, and this is affectionately, or this is what is referred to as the shared responsibility model. Again, along the top, Microsoft is going to uh, be taking care of the global infrastructure. There is data center to data center geographic redundancy, but that is from a single source. And we'll get into that very short, very soon uh, as to why that could be a potential challenge. Uh, there is short-term um, retention within Office 365 via the recycle bin, but again, that's not really for long-term or providing a point-in-time recovery. Microsoft will take care of the infrastructure level security and any regulatory, uh, re regulatory policies or compl um, compl uh, compliance reasons or compliance purposes. Yeah, Chris, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll add to this. It's, um, sure. you know, I, I see this all, very often, right? Where customers ask, well, well, doesn't Microsoft, you know, back up Office 365? And this slide here or this, this um, matrix is, is, a, is a really good uh, overview of what Microsoft does do and doesn't do. You know, I think a really good example is when, a, when an employee leaves the company, um, you know, Microsoft keeps the data for about a month, for a month, uh, but, but it does get deleted. So, you know, there's one example where you might want to consider uh, an Office 365 backup solution like me. Perfect. Th thanks so much. Uh, that's awesome. Thanks, Martin. Um, yeah, whether that, you know, having, ensuring, pardon me, that you have a point in time recovery in the event of accidental deletion. Malicious users, um, whether that be internal or external users, you know, infecting with malware or ransomware, rogue applications, or assuring that you have a backup gives you that peace of mind that you're going to be able to recover. Now, 
common conversations that I do have with customers or questions that they do ask me is that, you know, Chris, I have an unlimited, um, pardon me, I have, there's unlimited archiving and litigation hold provided in Office 365, E3 and above licensing, right? This is true, but so the question is, why would I need Veeam Backup for Office 365? And Microsoft makes it very clear that their role is of the data processor, but the, um, but the customer is the data owner. It is the customer's responsibility to maintain their data, control access to that data, and to also recover the data in the event of loss or corruption. There are Microsoft, pardon me, Microsoft does provide tools to help in securing and maintaining access to that data, but it does not offer a point in time recovery, uh, granular restore, or even recovery options for back on premises for Exchange, SharePoint, or even file servers. Veeam provides this ability to take backups as often as every five minutes and provides recovery of Office 365 emails in seconds, all right? There are, there's also key differences between archiving and backup and uh, backup and restoration. The fundamental difference is that when you're archiving, you're making a, a single copy or you're moving data to a secondary storage location. While the backup is making a copy of that data to ensure the recovery can occur. Now, Microsoft also provides um, copies of your data in Office 365, but these are geo-redundant replicated copies. What that means is that they are constantly updating from a single source. And if that single source becomes, uh, is hard deleted or corrupted or in any way changed, um, all copies are at risk at that point. So a backup is a fundamentally different is fundamentally different, pardon me, than a replica, and therefore is not directly updated every single time a change occurs. A backup gives you a snapshot into a into a single point in time. This means that when and not if, but when a business data your business data, pardon me, is threatened, the backup copy remains protected and can be used to restore lost data, all right? So Microsoft and Veeam share the belief that even though your data resides within Office 365, the data, still, uh, the data is still your responsibility. So you must be um, in complete control and have unrestrained access to your data. And this is done through a, a backup. And with Veeam Backup for Office 365, you will get the, the ability to provide a point in time recovery, granular recovery of Office 365 items in seconds, as well as e-discovery. Now, in terms of an implementation, Veeam Backup for Office 365 um, supports both on-premises Exchange and SharePoint, as well as Office 365 Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive for Business. The Veeam Backup for Office 365 server, because it is software defined, can be, uh, can be configured anywhere. So whether you want to run that on premises or if you want to run that as a VM within Microsoft Azure, you have that flexibility because again, the, the power of a software defined solution. From there, we can, we can store our backups either on premises or within object storage, uh, more specifically Microsoft Azure Blob Storage, and then giving you the multiple recovery options from Exchange, uh, SharePoint, and OneDrive. In fact, from a single Office 365 backup of your data, Veeam provides 25 different recovery options um, uh, for your data for email, SharePoint, and OneDrive. All right. We've talked about prote protecting you uh, from uh, your, your virtual your, and your, your physical um, workloads, but what about your unstructured data? What about your NAS, uh, your, your backing up your NAS data, or even say your Azure files, right? 
Beam provides that capability and our enhanced NAS protection gives you a scalable architecture, extensive data source support, which we'll be getting into in the next slide. Uh, we, we do have uh, a simple, uh, the ability to um, provide object storage integration as well as creating a uh, innovative storage agnostic uh, change file tracking uh, technology, all right? Now, in terms of our enhanced um, protection, the Veeam Enhanced NAS Backup is flexible. There are many types of NAS systems with many protocols and versions that we support uh, for your unstructured data. And with Veeam's Enhanced NAS uh, protection, we have the ability to protect SMB, which includes Azure Files as well as Azure File Sync, NFS, Windows file servers, as well as Linux file servers. Now, the unique Veeam change file tracking engine, this is what is going to ensure fast incremental backups take place so that only the changes since the last backups are captured, but in doing so, understanding what has changed since the last backup in an extremely fast and efficient way. With the ability to scale up as well as scale down through our Veeam, Veeam file proxies can be added or removed to achieve the desired performance for your NAS backup. And as what you can see on the screen, when we perform our first full backup, we are going to take a, you know, for lack of a better term, a fingerprint of all the different components within the file system hierarchy. So that when we perform our incremental backup, if, for example, file D changes, we can say, hey, you know what? Um, I own, because file D only changed, we can actually go back and, uh, or pardon me, we can uh, directly target file D as part of the incremental backup. Veeam NAS protection or enhanced NAS backup is, all, is also snapshot friendly and you can leverage storage snapshots um, as the source for your backup. Therefore, you're going to be removing any sort of hindrance of locked files as well as any impact on your production storage. All right, and from a recovery point of view, whether it's the entire file share to the original or different location, a point in time, as well as file level recovery. All right, now, even if your workloads are in the cloud, the need to protect and back up that data is also required. Now, there are numerous options that are, uh, that are available within Azure. When we're talking about availability zones or availability sets, um, you know, when you're configuring uh, LRS or GRS type storage replication. But I would, I would suggest that high availability does not replace having a backup. And regardless of whatever um, you know, platform or as a service um, model that you choose, data is always the responsibility of the customer, much like the shared responsibility model that we talked about in Office 365, this is also true for cloud implementations. And we can see here that the information and the data, whether it's software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure, infrastructure as a service or on-premises is always the responsibility of the customer. And through Veeam, we actually, and Veeam enables you to protect your cloud-based workloads with the Veeam agent uh, for either Windows or Linux. This will allow you to have complete control and visibility for your cloud-based workloads. You can organize, automate, deploy, and even upgrade the Veeam agent through the Veeam backup and replication uh, console. And then last but not least, having a, a, having a number of flexible recovery options. Now, in addition to the Veeam uh, agent for Windows and Linux, there's also um, soon to be released a cloud native uh, capability that Veeam is going to provide. And through the Veeam backup for Microsoft Azure, this delivers enterprise ready 
Azure backup and recovery that's cost effective and secure. Realist, uh, what you'll be able to do is, you know, be able to overcome any cloud data loss scenario in minutes with fast and flexible recovery options. Now, actually, let's highlight some of the features for Veeam Backup for Azure. First, rapid deployment. Being able to subscribe and launch directly from the Azure Marketplace and to start protecting cloud data, your cloud data in minutes. It is completely agentless, so you can utilize native Azure virtual machine snapshots for more frequent restore points and faster recoveries. You're going to get increased security because uh, you can secure your backup data across different subscriptions with support for multiple resource groups as well as cross-region backup. Uh, automated efficiency, right? Um, having the ability to automate Azure virtual machine snapshots as well as backups and retention policies for more reliable cloud uh, protection. Fast and flexible recovery. Whether you're looking to resume productions operations, resume production, pardon me, operations quickly and, e uh, and easily with flexible full and file level restore options. Uh, and, uh, you know, optimize cloud costs. Uh, with Veeam Backup for Azure, we can control cloud costs while optimizing protection through industry an uh, industry first built in backup cost estimation, and last but certainly not least, the low cost retention. Veeam has the ability to not only take snapshots, but take and move those snapshots, uh, copy or move those snapshots into Azure Blob uh, for cost effective long term retention of your backups. How does this, you know, what does this all look like? We have a number of virtual machines that are running in Microsoft Azure, and we deploy Veeam Backup for Azure uh, within, within Azure, all right? From there, we can create cloud native snapshots, as well as take those snapshots or create backups and store them into Microsoft Azure blob storage. Now, in terms of integration with your on-premises, uh, with your on-premises um, uh, data center, Veeam also has the concept of an external repository. An external repository will give us a view into your backups that are stored within Azure Blob to either A, perform a recovery of file or even application-specific items, or taking a copy of that backup and bring it back on-premises to ensure that you are um, uh, to ensure that you're really um, protected be an implementing implementing part of me the three two one rule all right so uh, to sum up you know taking a look at you know where, wherever your data is so any application any data in any cloud whether that's virtual uh, your unstructured data for NAS uh, cloud VMs, Office 365, or physical servers or workstation, Veeam has the ability to bring it all together and provide that single platform to protect your data, but also recover the data very quickly, efficiently, um, very quickly and efficiently. All right. In terms of a call to action, please engage the Veeam team. Uh, we'd be more than happy to provide uh, you know, whether it's trial licenses or help you or have a discussion or conversation and help design and architect uh, the best data protection solution uh, for you. Uh, if you want, schedule a, a trial or a POC. As, a, as, as the first point indicates, give us a call. Uh, we'd be more than happy to work with you and, you know, show you the value, the simplicity, the reliability, and the flexibility that Beam does have. Uh, last but not least, you know, because you are using Veeam, you're protecting your workloads, whether that's on-premises, uh, Office 365, or in the cloud, ultimately you're going to be able to save the day because no, it's not a question of if, but a question of when your data is going to be compromised or lost. Having the ability uh, to recover quickly and easy, easily is, uh, is, is paramount to success. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, uh, Martin, is there anything else that you want to add here? 
Yeah, well, maybe, you know, when um, on the first action there to engage the Veeam team, you know, what I see often is where, you know, customers talk to Veeam and they, you know, then they reach out to Microsoft saying, hey, Veeam says this, is that right? Or what do you think about this? And that kind of slows things down and might be confusing. So I recommend, you know, engage the Veeam and Microsoft team at the same time. Like reach out to your Microsoft team saying, hey, I have a Veeam meeting coming up. Can you send one of the cloud solution architects to, to just sit in and, you know, provide feedback? So I, I think doing it together uh, makes a lot of sense. And then in regard to the your trial POC, you know, Veeam, because um, you're one of our, our premier partners, we can apply for, for funding to, uh, to work with an SI to, uh, to, to offset the cost of a pilot. And we can also apply for some Azure credits to, uh, to offset the cost of Azure. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm all for saving the day. So uh, let's do that. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. All right. So this concludes, I would, uh, part one of the webinar today. And so thank you very much. And what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my lab and I'm going to provi provide some, you know, the, actually taking a look at the solutions that we were just talking about. All right. So the first thing I want to do is with Beam, you configure a backup job. All right. And within the backup job, this is where you would select the repository and as well as the retention. But this is where you want to set, select the repository for where you're going to send your backups. And we can see here that we have selected a backup repository that is a scale out backup repository. So it's as simple as saying, hey, I want to send my backups to the scale out backup repository that is that is named NAS plus, plus Azure Blob. And we've defined 14 restore points uh, for there, all right? So if we cancel to that, let's actually go take a look at the actual scale out backup repository definition, all right? So if we can see here, we'll go to properties, and let me just move that over there or here. Uh, we can see here there's that performance tier that I'm talking about. And the performance tier is what, again, what you have on premises. And right now we have one extend or one local repository, but we can come through and we can add additional extents or additional repositories into our scale out backup repository. So therefore, what you're going to be able to do is um, dynamically add capacity to your um, through your scale up backup repository. All right. From there, we also have the uh, capacity tier, and this is where you would extend your uh, extend your repository into Azure Blob. And whether you're looking to copy the backups as soon as they're created, or even move them after a specific point of time. And in this case, we'll say, hey, I want to move my backup files that are older than seven days. And one thing I, I wanna call out here is that remember that our retention was set for 14 days, all right? So moving the backup files older than seven days does not change the retention, but what it does is that it creates those, um, uh, those uh, what's the word, uh, the, the term I'm looking for? Those shell files back on premises, but those shell files contain the pointers into object storage. The retention of the 14 days is still going to remain, but you've removed that storage footprint and that hardware requirement from on-premises, and you're able to take advantage of the hyperscale uh, storage capabilities within Microsoft Azure, all right? Now, in addition to that, or pardon me, once the, the, once the, uh, the backups are uh, tiered off into object storage, great, you've, you've removed the footprint, all right? Now, uh, we remove the footprint from on-premises, that is. Now, we performed our backups. And regardless of where our backups are, whether they're locally on disk or they're within object storage, but what we can do is take, uh, if we go under, uh, under disk here, and these are all of our backup jobs that are residing on-premises. And if we just select whatever virtual, whatever job, and then whatever virtual machine that we do have, it's going to list all of our recovery options. And one of those being is directly restore to Microsoft Azure. All right, and let me just bring that up to the top of the screen here. And then we can see here that we have the ability to select the subscription where we're looking to restore. All right, and then from there, we will select the location that we want to restore into. Uh, do we want to use an Azure 
uh, proxy VM. Now, the reason why you would want to use an Azure proxy VM is that in some cases, uploading of machine disks to Azure may take some time. And this can happen if you are restoring machines to a, a distant location and the network connection is slow. And to really speed up and be more efficient with the restore process, it is recommended that you deploy an Azure proxy in the backup infrastructure, all right? Uh, this, Azure, uh, this Azure proxy is a very small uh, auxiliary machine uh, in Microsoft Azure, uh, which Veeam Backup and Replication um, uses to transport VM disk data into blob storage, all right? All right, so in this case, I won't actually go through um, the, I won't actually initiate the, the resource, so I, I, I won't say use the Azure proxy. We'll say next. And here's where you're gonna be able to select your VM size. Say, hey, you know what? I wanna have a standard A2, and this is the storage account that I wanna use, and I want to leverage managed disks. Great. Next, uh, which resource group do we want to restore into? And what is the name of the virtual machine? So what we'll do is we'll say underscore, whoops, demo. And we'll say, okay, of course, <laughs> that's an Azure restriction. There we go. And we'll say, okay. And we'll also select the resource group that we're looking to place the virtual machine into. And we'll say next. Here, we'll be able to select the virtual network or the VNet. And uh, we'll just use the defaults. Do we want to assign a public IP address? Will this virtual machine be publicly accessible? All right, we do have that capability. And what do we want our, do we want to assign an NSG uh, to there? So we go network security group and we'll just randomly pick that one. Fantastic. Somewhat of a um, uh, out of scope for our conversation, but Veeam, uh, because it's in the wizard here, let, let me, let me um, um, just briefly touch on this. In that Veeam not only provides the ability to re quickly restore and, and such, but Veeam has the capability to, to enable secure restore. So being able to take your disks and scan them for viruses as part of the restore process, all right? So before your virtual machine is powered on, we actually take those disks and scan them with the on-premises antivirus solution that you would have. And one of three things will occur. First, um, if Veeam finds, no, or the antivirus solution finds no, um, uh, no virus and it restores as, you, as expected. Second, finds uh, some sort of virus, it stops the recovery process. Third, it finds a virus, continues and completes the recovery process, but does not connect that virtual machine to the network. So you do have you you will still have the capability to to uh, to re or to access that uh, that virtual machine. All right, there we go. All right. Now, very quickly here, I also want to show you that external repository. So what we have here is that we've made a connection into Veeam Backup for Azure. And within Veeam Backup for Azure, we have these policies defined and these virtual machines backed up. So what we can do is we can highlight that virtual machine that again is within your Azure, um, Azure blob storage. And if we right click on that, it's going to give you the ability to, in, believe it or not, instantly VM recover a virtual machine that is running within Azure Blob Storage that was taken with Veeam Backup for Azure. If you want to restore individual guest files, right, or restore back to Microsoft Azure, we do have that capability, all right? Now, very, very uh, quickly here, let me minimize that and I will minimize that, and I will go over to Veeam Backup for Office 365. Now, again, if you're familiar with on-premises exchange, you will be familiar with the recovery process. Uh, in terms of what we, what we would do, we would define our object repository being Azure, Azure Blob, and then we would define our backup job. Once the backup job is defined and we've actually backed up that content, 
a recovery is as simple as right clicking and saying, hey, I want to recover my exchange data, my SharePoint data, or my OneDrive data. All right. Now, in terms of exchange, we'll say we'll recover the most recent restore point and it will launch that. And we can come in here and whether we're looking to recover an individual virtual machine, or pardon me, uh, whether we're looking to recover a, a, a specific email or a subset of emails, uh, it's, it's, it's as quickly as we're coming in here and right clicking on the content. As well, we can also preview the content so you actually can look at the piece of con or look at the email without having to restore it. Restoration options also allow multi select as well as exporting to PST, as well as a native format and even emailing that content to another user. All right. The same thing would be applicable to Exchange, or pardon me, SharePoint and OneDrive. So if we go in here, whether that's SharePoint or OneDrive, we can see that coming in here, it loads and we will select the user and have access to all of the user's OneDrive content. Uh, Beam Backup for Office 365 does support versioning. So in the event that this is version two or version three, we can come in and see all the older history for that document. All right. And you know what, last but not least, um, what I think what I'll do is um, for Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure, it is a soon to be released product. Uh, so it's not available today. However, what I do have is a, a demonstration that you can, uh, that we can, that I can share that will show you how Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure will work and how easy and simple it is to have that cloud native backup and protection. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's start with the uh, let's start with the demo. All right, here we go. So hello there, it's Andrew from Product Strategy, and I'm going to uh, give you the high overview, the sort of a preview for uh, the new product Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure. So I'm just going to refresh the page, and here we go. I need to log in there. Okay, so here is the, the user interface. So the first thing you'll do is you'll, as a new user, you'll go to the configuration itself, where you can actually configure the product by adding the Azure uh, subscription, configuring the workers. This is the um, our way to, to actually to introduce the proxy, kind of to uh, additionally help the product to process the data and move it, let's say, from the regular Azure um, uh, to Azure Blob, if you need to do that. Speaking of Azure Blob, you can add the um, backup repository there. As you can see already a couple of them added. Uh, probably last thing to mention about the accounts is that you can have different accounts, repository, backup admins, and Azure accounts. Um, go into server settings, um, you have the the kind of the default settings for the, the snapshots retention, certificates, um, email settings if you need to receive the notifications about the operations, whether they go um, su successful or not. And then uh, we have the licensing options where you can uh, click and bring the universal license into the configuration. And then you can see the uh, what is the the license consumption uh, that was already happening. So I have my two instances protected because of that, the license consumed by, by two. All right, um, so I'm going to close it. And here is the, the kind of the overview page where you can see a couple of um, things that were going on over the last uh, 24 hours. You can see that the amount of total instances that I have uh, connected with it, uh, you can see the number of instances already protected, the policies, the repositories. So here is the kind of small overview. Um, speaking about instances, so if I click there, you can see that I have four virtual machines running and I have two of them added to the policy production central US. And for both of them, I have the 18 points. So if I just click on policy because I can click on policy or on uh, restore points but if I click on policy you can see 
um, the policy and it's it's running sorry okay I can show you what's what's happening okay so I've been I've been just playing with it this morning and here it comes it just performs the the operation for one of the virtual machines there but then for the uh, kind of the history of the policy so it was running fine fine over the last few days and then I have uh, both the snapshot protection and the backup protection configured for those two virtual machines. All right, so if I go to the protected data, um, you can see those two virtual machines that I mentioned and the a number of recovery points. So if I need to recover something, I can click somewhere and I, um, I can see a couple of recovery options available. The, the, the VM uh, restore like an entire VM recovery, the disk recovery and file level recovery. So if I click somewhere like this restore, I can just um, see the small interesting operation wizard here. I can change the restore point uh, using either a snapshot um, or the backup itself. And then I can make some exclusion if I have like a couple of disks, let's say, connected to, to this particular virtual machine. And then I can go to recovery mode. All right, probably you'll need to see the new location with different settings. So again, uh, if I had the different subscription added here, I would have been able to, you know, to perform the cross subscription uh, recovery. And then obviously different, uh, regions if I need to so that would be also helpful okay and then I'll provide the reason and I'll I'll just click and uh, the product will do the operation itself so I guess that should be fine that was the high level um, overview and if you need to see some specific operation or some specific usage scenario so let me know but thank you for listening all right, thank you so much everyone for taking time out of your schedules and joining us uh, today uh, from Veeam and Microsoft, greatly appreciated. If there's any comments or questions, things that you want to double click on or really even uh, approach us directly, by all means, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out. We are always more than happy uh, to, to have a conversation with you. Uh, and with that said, uh, take care everyone. All right, excellent presentation there, Chris uh, and Martin. Really cool demo. Uh, we got a lot of feedback from the audience that they really enjoyed the demo. So now it's time to do just a little bit of Q&A. We have a little bit of time left for some questions. If you have questions about the product and the demo that you saw, now's the time to get your question in. All right, so uh, first question that came in. Uh, Chris, are you there? Martin, are you there? I am. I am. Awesome. All right. A uh, question that came in, they're asking, can Veeam Backup for Azure uh, backup on-premises uh, machines, or is it just for Azure only? It is for Azure only. However, you do get the uh, extended functionality with the external repository if you're looking to bring back the workloads or any specific file folder or application-specific item um, uh, back on-premises. Okay, nice. Another question they're asking, can the solution work in the cloud and not have to be part of an on-prem environment? So could it just be standalone in the public cloud? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Okay, excellent, excellent, let's see. We had a few other questions here. They were asking about um, uh, licensing. What's the licensing model on this? How does that work? Yeah, um, depending on the product, uh, there are different licensing mechanisms. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, from a very high-level overview, Beam Backup and Replication, we can or we we can license either based on uh, socket or workload, which basically means perpetual or subscription. Uh, Beam Backup for Office 365, we license per user, not per mailbox, but we license per user. So any shared mailboxes or anything like that, we don't have to license. It's only uh, a user, it's, or it's essentially the same as what Office 365 licenses. Uh, Veeam Backup for Office, or pardon me, uh, Veeam Backup for Microsoft Azure will be per workload or per virtual machine in that scenario. Okay, excellent, excellent. And another question here, 
they're asking essentially, how do I get started? I mean, what's the the next step uh, for folks who are interested in a solution? Yep, absolutely. There's really a couple of different avenues that we would suggest. First off is uh, reach out to your local Veeam representative. Um, if you're not sure who that Veeam representative is, uh, <laughs> Andrew, I'm going to throw you under the bus here. Uh, I'm going to ask you, can I, can I give out your email address and then we can route that accordingly? Of course. Okay, fantastic. Uh, if if you're not sure who your Veeam rep is, you can email Andrew Liu, so A-N-D-R-E-W dot L-I-U at Veeam.com, and we will get you in contact with uh, the local rep and, and SE. In addition to that, at, at Veeam.com, there is the software you can download. There's trials available uh, as well that you can uh, download, install, and quickly uh, get a um, uh, get some testing going. So e either way, either way. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for questions today, but a really great presentation and demo, uh, Chris and Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you very much, everyone. And thank you to Veeam and uh, Microsoft for supporting today's event. Before we go, I do want to award the $300 Amazon gift card that is going out to Mike Corey from Ontario. Congratulations, Mike Corey from Ontario. We'll reach out to you to deliver that prize. Uh, again, thank you to Veeam. Uh, visit veeam.com for more information. And of course, Microsoft, everybody knows Microsoft.com as well for additional information on Azure. Uh, thank you to all of our audience who attended today's event. We had tons of questions, lots of great participation. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.